Being joined with Mark Lancaster, VP of Operations with Permian Production Equipment based out of Midland, Texas. That's kind of the one of the hearts, I guess. There's a, a several different hearts down there in Texas with the energy activity going on. But how are you doing today? Doing well. Staying out of the heat. Well, that's good. That's a tough thing to do these days. But uh, uh, talk to me a little bit about your company. What is it you guys are doing? Well, uh, about 40 years ago, uh, the owner of the company invented a method of installing a compressor inside the structure of the pumping unit to utilize the energy of the pumping unit to draw the back pressure off the well and increase oil flow. You know, because everybody knows that, you know, the goal in most oil wells and artificial lift is to get the lowest bottom hole pressure you can. And one of the simplest and easiest ways to do that is to get rid of the casing pressure. You know, the casing pressure and the fluid pressure is what makes up the bottom hole pressure. And so if you get rid of the casing pressure using a device like we sell, then, you know, you can maximize or optimize the, the well. You know, and it used to be, you know, 20 years ago, stripper wells were the main wells that we went on, where you had a well making 5, 7, 15 barrels of oil a day. And when you took 50, 70, you had one pounds of pressure off the backside, you'd give it another three or four more barrels of oil or five barrels. Now, on horizontal wells, we do basically the same thing. We go and take the pressure off and lower the bottom hole pressure and you increase the gas drive of the gas pushing the fluid through the horizontal and the lateral and so that the well can be making more oil uh, as if the pump was even actually a little lower. Um, you know, so that's what we've done up in the North Dakota, Wyoming, Montana areas uh, for the last few years on horizontals. Uh, here in the Permian, we still work on quite a lot of verticals. You know, But if somebody is wanting to increase oil production, the simplest and easiest way to do or try is to pull the gas pressure off the backside. You know, I mean, the main reason we see flares up in your neck of the woods is because people have too much pressure. That's why they're flaring the gas instead of trying to do something else. Because getting rid of that pressure will allow them to increase their production. We do it in such a way that they don't have to they don't have to flare the gas. They can now capture the gas and then process it down wherever it's necessary. Um, so you'd be considered... So oh, I'm sorry. I was going to say, you'd be considered one of those solutions then to the flaring problem. Obviously, like Correct. you mentioned, North Dakota has had a flaring problem for quite a long time. I just read a, a, a headline the other day where Texas is talking about even f doing some more flaring just because of the increase in production. Um, talk to me a little bit about more specifically how you guys can help reduce some of these uh, flaring issues that are happening in the oil and gas world. Well, most of the reason why the, you know, the, the company's flaring is because the pressure builds up too much in the well and that restricts oil production. So if they go and invent the gas to atmosphere or flare it, now they can lower the pressure in that specific well to where that they can increase their production. And so what we do is we simply take that pressure and we move it and push it to a different place. You know, so instead of having maybe 10 wells that are flaring, you can send all of that gas to one specific place and then you just flare from that one specific location. Uh, as opposed to flaring from multiple layer areas, you know, or even capture the gas for now that you can actually sell it, you know. But up in the north, you know, it's it's getting harder and harder to sell gas, you know. And so to try and work with the EPA to not vent, you know, and then to minimize your flaring, what you do, you know, in our in our belief is that, you know take your number of flares down from five, six, seven, down to one or two. And so now you may be still flaring the same amount of gas, but you're only doing it in one or two plot, one or two points, you know, and then by now being able to lower your casing pressure on those wells, you can dramatically increase the production or keep the production where you would want it to have it when it's flaring. You know, because flaring, the whole point of flaring is to get bottle hole pressure as low as possible. 
You know, and so we also have a device, our hydraulic system, that's a standalone, and it not only can move gas, it can also move fluid. It's a multi-phase compressor. And so that works out in many instances, because in the Bakken, you have areas where you have maybe a mile or two miles of the flow line from one well to the battery. And just the back pressure that flow line produces holds from, holds formation pressure. And with our multi-phase compressor, we can push through all of that and uh, still lower the casing pressure to the well bore and thereby increase the oil production. So is that pretty much what it boils down to? Is the um, just the natural gas market, the price is too low for a lot of this uh, um, flaring reduction to happen? Because you know as well as I do, for the last 10 years, they've been talking about reducing it. But if there's not a market there, it, there, there's not a lot of incentive, if you will. And um, it just seems to me very different because there's such an abundance of this natural gas that you'd think that you'd want to uh, capitalize on it as much as you can. Do, are, are you familiar with the natural gas market? Are you able to comment on that at all? Well, you know, not only is the price low, but their capacity is low. You know, when they started drilling all these shale wells and they get a large, much higher amount of gas per barrel of oil. So in order to get the oil, they have to deal with a large amount of gas. And then they want to send the gas to a gas plant. But the gas plant is, you know, you know over capacity. And so the gas plant says we can't handle any more gas. And so the operators go and say, well, if we can't send the gas to the gas plant, it's going to restrict our oil production. So the next you know, solution they might have would be to flare it or to put it on a, a combustor. Um, there are some groups in Canada that I've seen where they're actually taking the gas in mobile sites and converting it right into propane, uh, which I think that's a good way to do it. You know, it costs a lot of money, uh, but then there's also places where the you know, will convert diesel engines to run on natural gas. And I think that's something else, too, that you know, a lot of oil companies, they converted more and more of their vehicles to run on natural gas. And that would help them to create their own market for what the product that they got. Because it's just something they're throwing away now uh, because of the flaring. But if they were able to capture all that gas and run all their fleet vehicles on it, then that's you know a pretty good savings, too. Mark Lancaster, Permian Production Equipment, on the line with us. Um, you mentioned earlier about, uh, well, for two two part question. First part is the different shale plays you're in. You mentioned um, you're up in the Bakken and in Wyoming, maybe a couple other plays there as well. You're also down in Texas, but then you mentioned the horizontal and the vertical side of things. So, um, how many different shale plays are you guys in? And are, are you seeing any um, indicators either on the horizontal side or the vertical side that, that you know, just anything standing out on either one of those sides? Because you don't talk to a lot of people that actually are kind of doing both on a day-to-day basis. Well, you know, I mean, I, I think both, you, you have people that are in the different niches. You have a, a lot of companies that are specialized in horizontal wells. And so they'll have their mindset, this is how, what they're going to do. But then there are also some newer companies that are coming out that are specifically going into conventional vertical wells and using new technologies, even technologies like my own, to be able to increase the oil production onto those wells because typically they're pretty uh, inexpensive to purchase right now. And uh, just had a, was talking to a guy in South Texas just about 30 minutes ago. And we'll be putting 20 compressors on their facility simply because they have a pumping unit to run on natural gas motors, which is a great idea, you know, but that normally means that the area they're in doesn't have electricity. Well, our compressors don't require electricity, so we can put it right into the pumping unit, and now we can lower the, the, mod, the back pressure on that well and increase the production on a well that was making... You know, maybe it was marginal at the time, making three to five barrels, and now it makes 10 or 15. Uh, we've done that for quite a few wells. We had a company in Wyoming. They had uh, 40 wells, and we put six 
compressors on the, all 40 wells and tied them all together. They didn't have electricity, but now they have a lot more oil production. I think they almost doubled their oil production on those 40 wells, which is a significant amount of money when you're talking about 90 barrels of oil. Yeah, you're not kidding. I have seen an uh, uh, uptick, if you will, in the vertical conventional drilling. So when you brought that up, I thought, geez, it, it, there is something to it. So you, you are seeing more and more of uh, these uh, traditional and uh, vertical wells just kind of s- s- pop up, huh? Yeah, I mean, it's just it's just because, you know, there, there are quite a few companies that have vertical well production, and to an extent, they sort of leave them as their... Uh, as a you know stepchild, or they just don't, they're not going to do much because they're looking at this horizontal market, you know. But in horizontal markets, the problem you run into, they have huge in, initial production, maybe three to six thousand barrels of fluid, you know. But after the second or third year, they really drop off significantly, and that's where compressors like ours and our multi phase stuff really helps those wells to be able to continue. You know, but when you have a company that's in the vertical and horizontal market, you know, their focus is going to be where it's going to make the most money, and that's usually horizontal. And that leads a lot of the vertical to be up for sale, and they get rid of them, and then smaller companies are able to come in and make those purchases. You know, and then when they buy those wells for you know, $20,000, we add our compressor systems in there, and it's a lot cheaper to add compression to one of these wells and to try to re-enter the well bore uh, or acidize it or a lot of other things that you'd have to do by going in, into the well. Um, so we make a pretty good sense for a lot of that. Sometimes the oil and gas industry is pretty complex, but also it becomes pretty specialized too. Um, who's your customer exactly? I like to ask people because sometimes, you know, their customer is pretty small but other times it can be anybody you know so just kind of who who is your uh, ideal or direct customer well you know we sell our product all over the world and we are in virtually every formation and uh, market that you can think of from uh, germany to russia to uh, southern texas even in third world countries like California, you know, we have profit. You know, and, uh, there's actually uh, up in Alaska, there's two pumping units up in Alaska. Most of their Alaska wells are very, very deep. But there's two pumping units up there, and both of those have been gas compressors on there because they were the, the, the simple choice to increase the oil production and optimize it. You know, but we deal with uh, all of the majors and the small guy. You know, so we don't. Uh, really have any specific area we go in and, and, and deal with wherever we can solve the problem of not enough oil. You know, we call our company, you know, our product is a gas compressor, but really we're in the business of moving pressure, relieving pressure, and getting more oil out of the ground. You know, we do that by eliminating gas pressure, and that allows more oil. So we can work on you know, stripper wells in Oklahoma, uh, horizontal wells in, in Texas, wells in the Rocky Mountains, wherever they need to be because of, of the, the central aspect of our equipment. You know, we don't require much maintenance at all. Um, actually, we have maybe two maintenance people for all of the compressors we have around the world. This, for the most part, most people can take care of their own. They don't require a special mechanic. Kind of final thoughts here wrapping up, Mark Lancaster, with Permian Production Equipment. I'd like to give guests the final word in case there's anything we forgot, anything they want to reiterate. But mostly that way the question's not framed by me, so that way you can go any direction you want. So um, the floor is yours, sir. Well, you know, there, there's a lot of opportunities in the oil field, you know, and new technologies are always out there. But as you said, you know, the oil industry is about 100 years old. What was true 100 years ago is still true today. You know, you get pressure out of the way, you're going to make more oil. Uh, I like to show the video of uh, Jed Clampett with the Beverly Hillbillies. 
you know, and back in the 60s, the way I learned that you made oil was you just poked a hole in the ground. You know, and once you poked a hole in the ground, the oil came out. And that was just because you created a differential pressure. And that's what we're all about, is making the differential pressure. Make more oil.